Hey, have you checked out our sister channel yet? I'm talking about Visual Academy. The king would accuse of treason and consequently have You can find the link in the description. So what's this channel about? Well, this will definitely be one of your favorite channels on YouTube if you love finding out about history, movies and shakers from the past, and many other important events in a fun and entertaining way. And there's not a Hawaiian shirt in sight. Check it out and tell us what you think. And now let's get into this video. Let's see, if you were to ask which are the most tense borders on the planet, I'm sure you can give me many different answers. North and South Korea, India and Pakistan, Iran and Iraq, Greece and Turkey, Venezuela and Colombia, Azerbaijan and Armenia. After all, which country doesn't have troublesome neighbors? Thanks to a large extent to this state of affairs, visual politic has an endless collection of topics. And this time we are going to move to a border that more closely resembles a volcano. It has been inactive for decades, dormant, without making big headlines. However, in recent times, it has awakened. And how? Algeria cuts diplomatic ties with Morocco as tensions build. It is not that the relations between the two neighbors were ever that fruitful. The border shared by Morocco and Algeria has been closed since 1994, and the two countries have long been at loggerheads over Morocco's occupation of Western Sahara. Yet in recent times, the tension has been growing, and the Algerian foreign minister even accused Morocco of carrying out hostile actions. And yes, in a way, it is typical for Algiers to blame Rabat for everything bad that happens to it. From the existence of separatist groups in the Kabylia region, to the brutal wave of wildfires that the country has suffered this summer. But this time, we're talking about something different. So the question we can ask ourselves is very clear. What has led Algeria to cut its diplomatic ties with Morocco? Has Rabat behaved so badly that its neighbor has taken this decision? Is there a real danger of things getting out of hand and the Moroccans and Algerians ending up in a tussle? Today on Visual Politic, we're going to answer these questions. But first, let's take a look at a bit of history. The Forgotten Sands. Algeria and Morocco have never gotten along very well. Both countries regard themselves as the great power of the Maghreb, and that rivalry always ends up generating friction. To make matters worse, both countries share 994 miles or 1,600 kilometers of border, a border that France, the former colonial ruler, was never too keen to draw precisely, keeping the lines separating the two territories blurred. So one of the first things that both countries did as soon as they gained their independence was to send more and more troops to the border in order to expand their respective territories. Thus began the so-called Sand War. During 1963, there were numerous border clashes that served only to fuel the rivalry and enmity between the two neighbors. <laughs> Since then, the major point of conflict has always been related to the former Spanish province of Western Sahara. In 1975, Morocco occupied this territory with the so-called Green March, and within months, a war broke out between the invaders and the pro-independence group, the Polisario Front. And despite the material support of Algeria, the truth is that the fighting did not go well at all for the Sahrawi interests. Hassan's second troops did not hesitate for a second to use napalm and white phosphorus, which caused the Sahrawi to flee to refugee camps in Algeria. Since then, 180,000 Sahrawis have been living in the Tindouf province, a vast desert plain in the middle of the Sahara Desert. The war between Morocco and Polisario continued until a truce was reached in 1989 thanks to the mediation of the UN and the agreement between both parties to hold a referendum. Yes, a referendum that was never actually held and probably never will be. The point is that the 1989 truce was seen as an opportunity for the Maghreb and this was precisely the moment when the AMU, the Arab Maghreb Union, an organization created to stimulate free trade between Algeria, Libya, Mauritania, Morocco and Tunisia was created. And do you know what? It was an immediate success. Borders were opened and visa controls were lifted. Trade moved freely from one country to another, but the harmony was short-lived. It barely lasted five years. Civil war plunged Algeria into chaos and all the hopes placed in the AMU were suddenly dashed. 
1994, gunmen shot their way into the Atlas Asni Hotel in Marrakesh, killing two Spanish tourists. Hassan II accused Algeria of being behind the attack, and in response, Morocco suddenly expelled thousands of Algerian residents and tourists, while again demanding visas. Algeria's generals responded by fortifying and closing their borders. Since then, almost 30 years have passed, and during all this time, the border has been closed. For years, oil and gas boosted the Algerian economy. The country had the resources to finance its development. But as fossil fuel prices have plummeted, Algeria has plunged back into chaos, especially since the popular protests in 2019 that ended Bouteflika's 20-year dictatorship. <laughs> Meanwhile, Morocco has strengthened its position. In fact, it is the Alawi dynasty that has shown the greatest interest in reopening the border. Mohamed V said that this last July in his throne day speech. <laughs> Be that as it may, it doesn't look like the situation is going to change anytime soon. Listen up. New tensions and old disputes. It is almost a year since the Polisario Front ended the ceasefire with Morocco, which had maintained calm in Western Sahara. We already covered this on Visual Politic, and as many of you will remember, the situation worsened when the United States recognized Moroccan sovereignty over the former Spanish province. Trump's decision was a victory for the Alawi dynasty and a blow to Sahrawi aspirations to one day hold a referendum on its independence. In return, Morocco had to normalize its diplomatic relations with Israel. And when we talk about normalizing, we talk about being transparent. Because the truth is that Israel and Morocco have always maintained very cordial relations, although not officially. A cordiality about which there are now few doubts in view of the extensive use that the Moroccan authorities have made of the Israeli spy software Pegasus. Project Pegasus, Algeria closely watched by Morocco. Moroccan intelligence services spied on a whopping 6,000 telephone numbers with the Pegasus software. We are talking about almost all the bigwigs in the neighboring country, the so-called Le Pouvoir, the political, economic, and military elite that have dominated the Algerian Republic since the country's independence. And as you can imagine, you don't need to be Einstein. Rabat's involvement in this espionage plot has been very unfortunate in Algiers. And to top it all off, the espionage comes in collaboration with Israel, because Algeria is a country where everything moves very slowly, and today it continues to show itself to be one of the most committed defenders of the Palestinian cause. So Algiers is accusing Rabat of betraying the Muslim world by allying itself with the Jewish enemy. And of course, the ones who are really delighted with all these new developments are the Israelis. Because the logic of the enemy of my enemy is my friend always works. In the same vein, three years ago, Rabat broke off relations with Iran after it came to light that the Polisario Front was receiving support from Iran and Hezbollah. So let's say the blocks appear to be defined like this, Morocco and Israel versus Algeria and Iran. That is why in August, the Israeli foreign minister visited Morocco and did not miss the opportunity to add fuel to the fire. Lapid reveals the existence of a rapprochement between Algeria and Iran. But be careful, because all these renewed ties between Morocco and Israel also come in handy for the Algerian government. As you see, as I was telling you before, the fall in oil and gas prices has been terrible for the country's economy, especially because the government had been subsidizing a lot of things with the money it received from oil and gas. And of course, as soon as the cuts came, the citizens' protest took Bouteflika's regime by storm. But wait a minute, because the whole post-Bouteflika period is getting even worse. The struggles between the different factions of Le Pouvoir have only added to the chaos in the country. So let's say turning the spotlight on an external enemy, be it Morocco or Israel, is a strategy that Algerian propaganda was eager to exploit. To what extent? Well, to the extent that this summer, northern Algeria was literally a raging inferno. Morocco offered two firefighting planes. And what do you think the Algerian response was? Well, rather burn than be humiliated. Check it out. 
Morocco's aid offer to Algeria falls on deaf ears. Taboon calls for European help. Believe me, the tug of war is continuous. Now, what is clear is that the economies of both countries would gain a lot if both countries got along well. And things in Algeria are certainly not going in the right direction, especially when it comes to the economy. So the question is, why is there so much interest in confronting Rabat? Is it just a question of propaganda and political marketing? Well, listen up. <laughs> Gas and Fury Algeria is the 10th largest producer of natural gas in the world. Half of this gas is used for its own consumption, and the other half is exported. As you can imagine, its main customers are European. 60% of the natural gas that Algeria sells abroad reaches Italy or Spain, mostly through pipelines. But of course, you know where Algeria is located. For these pipelines to be able to reach the European continent, at the time it was necessary to negotiate with neighboring countries. Tunisia for the Trans-Mediterranean gas pipeline, and Morocco for the Maghreb Europe gas pipeline. And yes, the current diplomatic crisis between the two countries has already had consequences. A new escalation, Algeria to stop supplying gas to Spain via Morocco. If there is one thing that connects the economies of Algeria and Morocco, it is undoubtedly the Maghreb Europe gas pipeline. A total of 870 miles or 1400 kilometers of pipeline from the Algerian fields to Cordoba in Spain, 335 miles or 540 kilometers, of which run through Moroccan territory before crossing the Strait of Gibraltar. The pipeline was inaugurated in 1996 and currently has the capacity to transport some 10,000 million cubic meters of natural gas per year. Negotiations for the implementation of this pipeline began in 1990, exactly during that five-year period in which Morocco and Algeria got along reasonably well. And it was a win-win agreement. Spain secured its main source of gas supply, while Algeria became richer by trading. But the real key to it all is in what the Alawi dynasty got out of it. You see, in exchange for the rights of transit of gas to the Iberian Peninsula, Morocco receives a toll of 7% of the value of the gas exported along this route. In 2019, this figure did not reach 58 million US dollars or 50 million euros because of the fall in fuel prices, but in 2014, it was close to 232 million dollars or 200 million euros. In addition, the company in charge of operating the pipeline is a company whose shareholding is shared by the Spanish Naturgy and the Portuguese Galp, thanks to an agreement made in 1992 and which is set to expire on the 31st of October 2021. This means that in a matter of days, ownership of the Moroccan section of the pipeline will revert to the Moroccan state. Rabat had already let it be known that they hoped to obtain an even more advantageous agreement. The problem for Morocco is that the Maghreb Europe pipeline is not the only one that transports Algerian gas to the Iberian Peninsula. In 2011, the Medgaz underwater gas pipeline was inaugurated, which directly connects the Algerian gas fields with the Spanish network in Almeria. It has a capacity of 8,000 million cubic meters. This would mean that the Medgaz pipeline alone would be insufficient to cover Spain's needs. But Algeria's state-owned Sonatrack has already made its move. Natergy and Sonatrack expand the capacity of the Medgaz pipeline by 25%. The expansion of Medgaz will bring the export capacity of the pipeline to 10 billion cubic meters. According to the agreement, it is to be completed before the end of 2021. Although, just in case, Algeria has assured Spain that if the project is delayed or needs more gas, it would be ready to supply it by means of ships with liquefied natural gas. Another problem for Morocco is that the Maghreb Europe gas pipeline provides 45% of its gas demand at a price below the market price. A natural gas that also supplies fuel to thermal plants that generate 12% of the country's electricity. In other words, cutting off the tap of the Maghreb Europe gas pipeline would mean that Algeria would be depriving its neighbor of an important energy supply and a notable source of income the best tool for political propaganda, although not the only one. The truth is that lately, in Algiers, they don't miss a chance to take a dig at their neighbours. I don't know if it has anything to do with the fact that generating a conflict is typically a device used by politicians across the globe to hide their failures and reinforce their leadership. Come on citizens, let's rise up together against the enemy. Algeria closes airspace to all Moroccan planes. However, there are two issues that Algeria should not ignore. 
the one hand, LNG is more expensive to deliver than gas arriving by pipeline. Therefore, Algerian gas will lose its competitive edge. And Spanish regasification plants can receive LNG from Algeria, but also from anywhere else in the world. So they need to be careful that the pipeline expansion is not delayed. On the other hand, without the Maghreb Europe gas pipeline in operation, any technical problem preventing the Medgaz 1 from operating would leave Algeria with no alternative to transporting its natural gas to the Iberian Peninsula. And with this, it would lose one of its main sources of income. And bear one thing in mind, Spain may have gas stores that could temporarily cover any lack of supply, but I assure you that right now, there is not a dinar left over in Algerian coffers, and that's not counting the money they would lose by ceasing to supply Morocco. In the end, everything points to the fact that all this enormous tension that has been stirred up between the two neighbours may just be an Algerian ploy to strengthen its position when negotiating the future of the Maghreb Europe gas pipeline and prevent Morocco from demanding a review of the conditions that were agreed 30 years ago. So, although visual politic will continue to keep an eye on this issue, it seems unlikely that the blood will reach the river, or in this case, the border. Of course, you know how these things are. Tensions exist, and one mistake or the slightest misunderstanding can suddenly light the fuse. Playing with fire, that is, economic and military threats, is never a good idea. But at this point, we have a question for you. Do you think that in the end, sanity will reign and an agreement will be reached that is basically beneficial for both Morocco and Algeria? Leave us your answers in the comments below. And if you found this video interesting, then don't forget to give it a like. All the best, see you next time.